Udah ada centok Please Good morning all of you Respected Chairman and dear colleagues, management of depressed fracture of calcaneus by minimal excess elevation and bone grafting, a modified procedure. There is a unanimous opinion for a relatively undisplaced fracture. We all manage them conservatively and they get a good result. <coughs> there is a helpful easy classification given by SX Leprosti. There are two main types, tongue type depression and the central depression. These are the fractures which are essentially manageable by percutaneous elevation. This is a joint depression type which was managed by a Stenman pin as given by SX Leprosti. Sanders classification helps us in management of calcaneus fracture by giving us the exact lines of fracture. This is how the Sanders classification helps us. <coughs> These are the primary fracture lines which run in a fracture calcaneus. Note the direction of KY to hold the sustenticulum by percutaneously put KYS. This is the SS leprosy method, but what are the problems? A stemlin pin or a Gissen spike, etc., can give to skin problems. These are the problems which we face when we use a percutaneous place device. <coughs> if we put a pin, but if it has not elevated the facet, it is of no use. So, exact facet elevation has to be done. This was elevated, but it has collapsed. So this should not happen. Essentially, in this patient, the bone graft was not used. If there is no void, there is no need for a bone graft. But usually, when we elevate the depressed facet, there is a large void created as can be seen. And this void, if we fill up with bone graft, collapse would be minimized. For a successful percutaneous reduction and internal fixation, we need to study the anatomy carefully. These are the bony points which we have to take into account when we take a imaging. These are the best fractures for percutaneous elevation, the facet depression, tongue type and the central depression. The procedure is specifically useful in patients with poor skin condition. This is the setup, initial role of bean bag. We have to have an imaging comfort with both plain imaging. This is the lateral view, the IITV position, we play the knife, find out the exact spot where we have to give an incision. This is a minimal incision, easy access from posterior aspect, just lateral to the tendoachillis. We have to put a Stenman pin which should be thick 5 mm or 6 mm minimum. And then we go beneath the depressed tongue, advance the pin, feel the depressed facet. Then this is what we aim for, exactly below the facet we go. Then we should start elevating, we should give the elevating force, as we start elevating, then we find the pin bends a bit. That much amount of force needed, even a 5 mm pin bends. Elevation force as seen by the bending pin. We have to go on elevating. A void is created below this facet. And this has to be elevated. We have to feel the complete elevation. We have to see the angles. When we see this void, this we can fill up. This is the subtalar view in the actual view. We have to have a small punch elevation of various depressed fragment if that can be done percutaneously. We have to see the actual views. This is the graft we procure from tibial condyle and carefully this graft is placed in the void. This is the essential modification of the technique. This can be filled through a small uh, sleeve or directly. It requires some patience and requires around 5 to 7 minutes to fill up and pack up this whole graft. You can nicely see the whole void gets filled up perfectly. After filling the void, then fixation is by four KYS placed in different planes, a multi planar fixation. We have to adjust this KYS while fixing and we have to exactly keep on elevating and put the punch till fixation occurs. This is the lateral uh, wall which bursts out and it can be put back by manual pressure. We have to cut, bend and turn our pins. We have to arrange cut ends and close the wound wound could be closed in a layer. If central depression is elevated and fixed with K-wire, we may add a push screw also 
to keep it elevating. Push screw helps here in central depression. These are the clinical photos of K wire and push screws. These are the various tongue type depressions which are elevated and nicely held and good results. This is the percutaneous fixation. Poking a stenman pin simply is not enough. It should exactly elevate the facet, then only the procedure is satisfactory. If there is a tongue which is gone up, we can put it back into order with a pin. Note the direction of KY to hold sustentaculum in the actual view. This is essential. Unless we have a purchase into the sustentaculum, it would not hold. Bolus angle is recreated. Gissens angle is recreated. Plant fragment specific hold, whatever is depressed. This is use of KYS and push screws. If required, occasionally we have to be prepared for our if, if this technique is not giving the result. These are the some results of depressed facet. You can see exact restoration of facet is possible. Another example, elevated and fixed, holding nicely. The pins can be removed between 8 to 10 weeks. By that time, patient is non wet bearing. This is our study, you, study of 21 males and 4 females, total 25 patients studied. Healed well, KYS removed. Look at the role of grafts. The grafts there have wonderfully consolidated and they have not allowed collapse to occur in the healing phase. This is long term result, 6 years after the treatment with KYS. The grafts are still seen there. Good maintained reduction is seen. This is after healing. Low, note there is no heal widening or virus. This is the ideal patient for percutaneous elevation and fixation. The depressed posterior facet and the, the advantages of this technique are, this is a minimally invasive technique, it's not demanding, it's cost effective, very short operating time and the results are better at times than conservative treatment and of course by a major operative procedure. In conclusion, I would like to say, this technique we avoid problems of open reduction, hospital stays short and it, the results are comparable to open reduction and internal fixation. Friends, this method does achieve the goal of articular congruence if done with the method suggested as suggested by SS leprosity and avoids problems of ORIF and in case future we need a subtalar fusion, the skin is undisturbed. Uh, this is essentially the content of my talk. This is essentially the fractures which can be benefited by percutaneous fixation. Thank you friends. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Yes. I, I uh, indication for percutaneous in Rockwood and Campbell is only tongue type depression, which is an extra articular, which is an exception in Sanders classification that is type 2C. Yeah. And you showed earlier was tongue depression, in which you were getting good results of percutaneous. But this last photograph is joint depression, and you cannot get, according to any many of the authors, that yeah. reduction, and you surely have subtle arthritis and impingement. Yeah. I, I absolutely get your concern. This is this is definitely the concern in most of the practicing minds. Now the problem is, if you do an open reduction also, subtalar arthritis is inevitable in as large as 30 to 40 percent patient. That is only what? Type three and type yeah. What what we are interested in is getting a articular congruence. Now with good imaging technique, if these facets are elevated and with biplanar imaging most of the reduction can be achieved within 1 to 3 millimeters of displacement and long term results with these patients have given us adequate results. Sir, the posterior facet has a cartilage, it is a smooth surface, how can you assess that how much you have to elevate? You are maybe over elevating it, the joint will surely go into subtalar arthritis and in open reduction only in type 3 and type 4 which are highly communicated, only there is subtalar arthritis when you are doing open reduction with the plating. Yeah. That means they are doing primary arthritis for us. Yeah, I, I, I got it and this, this therefore the indication for this technique is only these two types not highly comminuted fractures and these are the only indications for this technique. Undisplaced intra-articular fractures and tongue type depressions you can use. Uh, tongue type depression and even central depression can also be managed very nicely. But sir, central depression how are you assessing without CT scan? You cannot assess whether, whether it's posterior facet is involved or not, it's just a depression type to see. Like in dumb type, you have a depression of yeah. middle facet. Yeah. And when you take a CT scan, yeah. the joint is not involved. That is called type 2C. It's an exception in sinus classification yeah. for tongue type depression. Yeah, I, I, got, I, I got absolutely got your uh, point. but Maybe you're getting good results because they're extra articular. If the patient is having no pain when he's standing, that means it is extra articular. Even if there's a joint depression, middle facet, the thalamic portion is depressed. You cannot, you can have good result even when you leave it in plaster. Yeah, yeah. The, the comparative result, uh, results. 
Uh, doctor, I, you can discuss yeah. it later on. Yeah. yeah. That will be nice. Thank you. The next paper is on locking calcaneal plate for the surgical management of the calcaneal fracture. Dr. Sabarwal. to all. Um, my presentation is on locking calcaneum plate for surgical management of calcaneum fractures. I am not against percutaneous. And the aims and objectives were for displace intra-articular fractures, calcaneum fractures, which are involving the posterior facet or not. But the objective out here was to use calcaneum plates as locking plates, specifically Y and P shape, and to study the mode of injury and to assess the subtalar joint. In scoring system, we used Marlin foot score and we have done 19 cases and excellent is 90 to 100 score and failure is less than 50. In my data, out of the 19 cases, we got 48% excellent result and 10 had failure and good was around 15%. Number of patients we used, 14 were intra-articular, very specifically I'm saying it because they were assessed on CT scan and 5 were extra-articular and the foot was 58% in left and male were 13 out of 19. The mode of injury were mainly RTA and little bit of fall and one case only assault. Indications for surgery are displaced intra-articular fractures involving the posterior facet and 25% involvement of the calcaneum covered articulation or displaced calcaneum tuberosity also have been tried. That's the next articular. And lastly, fracture dislocation which was not seen in my study. This is Sanders classification which assess on CT scan is mainly for joint depression and in this you can see the lines from A to C which are lateral, C is type 2C is an exception, can be extra articular in tongue type depression. And I'll skip through this, this is SS Lopresti classification already been told. In the top you can see is joint depression which are surely always intra articular and the lower half shows tongue depression which goes back to the tibial tuberosity and they can be extra articular or intra articular or have to be confirmed by CT scan. The incision was taken in a lateral extensile approach, which was 1 cm lateral to the tendoacles, 2 cm above the lateral malleus, and the curve was taken on the junction of the skin and the heel pad, where the skin changes occur, and it was taken till the 5th metatarsal. Gizane angle was assessed preoperatively and postoperatively with bowler's angle, and lastly, the axial views was seen to see the varus angulation of the calcaneum. There was 5 degree of variation in all of them. Error was obviously there but still patients got good results out of it. This is a wrinkle test. You have to do it before, op before pre-operatively to assess whether the patient has minimum swelling or not to avoid skin necrosis. If you will do with swelling, you will surely have skin necrosis. You can even wait for 14 days, up till 14 days to reduce swelling, but not to go surgically without reducing the swelling. Intraoperatively, we took steps like we gave a lateral incision and we used KYS to retract the whole flap, keep it retracted, putting the KYS into the lateral malleus. Then you can properly see the thalamic portion which is seen on the right side. I don't have a... Okay. And in this we can see a Stenman pin put in the tibial porosity to use as a joystick to assess whether we can use and open the fragment middle facet. In later onwards, you can see we have put two KYs into the thalamic portion or the middle facet, which are going up to the medial aspect of the subcentric telli. And then we're putting two KYs using a template. We have put a calcaneum locking plate to assess the molding and the curving of the calcaneum plate to get the perfect contiguity. Closure was done with uh, layer by layer, and it was deep fascia was first sutured, and we were suturing from the distal aspect to the apex, and then from the proximal aspect to the apex with minimum tension and a drain was used a suction drain for one uh, for 24 hours this is an example of type 4 sanders treated with primary arthritis this came into my failure case why because this was having three fracture lines badly displaced cannot be even treated in any form so this was only this is a ct ct view showing type 4 sanders and in this sanders we did plating with primary arthritis why? Because we could not get the contiguity even after opening the subtalar joint. It was a cartilage. So we had to remove the cartilage, we had to put grafting, autograft, and then we had to fuse it. 
and after that we had put a plate to increase to remove to avoid the heel widening and to get the cancellous bone united so in type 4 there is always a failure whether you doing it plating or percutaneous coming to the complications skin necrosis was the most common and deep osseous infection was given in one case who was a diabetic patient and uh, per uh, perineal tendonitis cerebral nerve, nerve pain malunion was not seen in even one case subtalar arthritis was seen in four cases and they were all type 3 so what study i came to a conclusion was type 2 was giving excellent results type 1 was giving excellent results with a minimum displays but type 3 required either secondary arthrodesis or type 4 absolutely required primary arthrodesis one should not wait to give another second surgery to the patient and gave better results but came in my failure case because all the uh, requirements of the melon foot score were not accomplished thank you thank you doctor any question thank you thank you the next is early results of pons street methods by dr d k taneja गुड मॉर्निंग एवरी वन आई एम हेयर टू प्रेजेंट दस माई द रिजल्ट ऑफ माई स्टडी ऑन द ट्रीटमेंट ऑफ नॉन यूडोपैथिक क्लब फुट बाई द पॉन्सर्टिव मेथड I will begin with a brief background and then uh, I will present the studies. Clubfoot, as we know, occurs in approximately one in one thousand live birds, maybe idiopathic or non-idiopathic. The severity clinically is assessed by the Pirani and the Demiglio scoring, and the monitoring of correction is done using the clinical and the radio radiological parameters. The non-idiopathic clubfoot. these are associated with many neuromuscular and the congenital conditions arthrogryposis amniotic band syndrome pierre robin syndrome meningomyelocele larsen syndrome and others a brief word about the amc this represent represents multiple joint contractures which are congenital it's not a specific diagnosis but a common phenotypic characteristic of multiple joint contractures This can either be a classic arthrogryposis, or it can be a distal arthrogryposis. Classic involves all the four extremities. Distal involves only hand and feet. In arthrogryposis, in the lower extremity, the club foot is the most common disorder, and these have been described as more severe and rigid than idiopathic club foot. For the non-idiopathic club foot, the treatment options which have been described. and which which holds uh, true even now the primary procedures which include the soft tissue releases telectomies and the secondary procedures when, which in addition to soft tissue release and telectomy includes the elaser of external fixator decancellectomy of talus and cuboid triple arthrodesis combined cuboid and cuneiform osteotomies historically non non operative management has not been favored then what are the problems with surgery like if we are doing a study on the ponsetti method do we have some problems most of the surgically treated club foot in non idiopathic category although they produce a plantigrade foot but these are painful stiff and prone to recurrence and the recurrence in these non virgin club feet is difficult to treat and the results have been inconsistent the goal of treatment as described by turcos for the idiopathic club foot is a cosmetically acceptable pliable plantigrade foot and to spare the children and parents the ordeal of multiple operations and hospitalizations lloyd roberts in their report on arthrogryposis multiplex congenita in 1970 described the goal for these feet as to convert a deformed rigid foot into a plantigrade platform we believe an important adjunct to this would be to achieve that goal with as few procedures of the least ablative nature as possible a brief word about the ponsetti technique 
it's based on kinematic coupling consists of serial manipulation and casting with fulcrum being at the head of talus followed by tenotomy and bracing since 1990s this method has gained popularity in the treatment of idiopathic cleft foot and we at our institute have been personally very satisfied with the results in the treatment of idiopathic cleft foot our question was whether ponsetti method can be used and can be applied for the non idiopathic cleft foot so we carried out a study in the lady harding medical college between september 2011 to june 2013 <coughs> the study was carried out by, uh, carried out under the guidance of dr anil mitani the selection of cases included any case with non idiopathic cleft foot in age less than 1 year of age any feet which was not virgin had prior surgical intervention was not included clinical assessment by demiglio and pirani scoring was done and the serial casting was done as per the standard ponsetti method followed by tenotomy and splinting we evaluated the outcomes on the basis of the number of cast percentage requiring tenotomy recurrence failures and the secondary procedures our observation and results a total of 30 club feet were included in the study in 18 children mean age was about 2.7 months and the mean follow up was 13 months the major chunk belonged to age group less than 4 months uh, we identified four syndromes amc amniotic band syndrome pierre robin syndrome spina bifida major chunk belonged to the amc group demiglio and pirani scoring was, was done the majority belonged to the very severe group with a demiglio score of more than 15 mean demiglio score was 17.8 the pirani score mean was 5.45 the number of cast 4 to 12 with a mean of 5.93 tenotomy was required in 28 feet that is 93% we identified relapses in 9 feet that is 30% the mean interval from the completion of correction till the identification relapse was about 12 weeks that is 3 months we made an observation that all these recurrences occurred in the arthrograpotic feet a detailed history was taken regarding the compliance with the braces however the bracing compliance was not found to be an issue the recurrences were managed with recasting to recover the original position this required one cast in 7 feet and 2 feet had to undergo repeat tenotomy to address the residual equinus after the application of two cast complications occurred in 2 feet midfoot break which occurred in 1 feet and the other foot developed erythema and blistering over the talar head region now we categorize them as arthrograpotic and non arthrograpotic that is the rest of the non idiopathic group the major difference being the recurrence which was much more in arthrograpotic and we did not did not uh, encounter any uh, recurrence till now in non arthrograpotic also the severity of the club foot was much more in arthrograpotic this is a case uh, of amc showing the results of correction this required about five cast in this in this child on the left side is pre correction and on the right side is after the correction historically it has been difficult to correct and maintain the correction of non idiopathic cleft foot early treatment has been recommended because these are most supple in infancy and even then the treatment has been essentially surgical the two most common surgeries being soft tissue releases and telectomies in the soft tissue releases which can be either a, which can range from echelist tenotomy to posterior release to radical soft tissue releases the satisfactory results have not been very good lloyd roberts describes satisfactory results of about 21% drummond about 26% and whitman et al about 75% Talectomy also has been described as primary all and also as salvage procedures. However, this does not address the forefoot deformity, 
and the larger series evaluating the uh, the results of talectomies have satisfactory results of only 45 to 50%. Also, uh, not to forget, the surgically treated club foot are prone to recurrence, painful, stiff. In our study, all the feet were corrected satisfactorily after the completion of first series of casts. In nine feet, that is 30% recurrence was seen. Two required one more tenotomy. Rest required only a second series of casts. After our study and the results, we expect any salvage procedure, if needed, in these feet will be less extensive than those required for feet which have been treated with more extensive surgical procedures. The limitations of our study being a small cohort size of only 30 patients, a brief follow-up period of only 13 months. However, we plan future reports with longer follow-up and our purpose in this report is to detail the success in treating stiff non idiopathic club fit without extensive surgery during infancy. Thank you. Thank you, Doctor. Any question? You have performed yes, sir. Uh, tenotomy of tendo agilis in all the cases? No, sir. Uh, only in cases which required a tenotomy in which we could not achieve dorsiflexion. Uh, only in about 28, uh, 28 feet out of 30, that is more than 90%, <coughs> we required a tenotomy. Thank you. The next is correlation between clinical and radiological correct correction in long term follow up the treated radiopathic color foot. Dr. Taneja. Is he here? Dr. Taneja. Next is the correlation for foot bimalleral angle with Chinese score by Dr. Anil Jain. No. Next is the tuberculosis calcaneum in children. But at a Verma. This is last. Good morning, everybody. Myself, Dr. Indesh Verma, Senior Resident, Department of Pediatric Orthopedics, Chachanur to Balchikesale, Delhi. Today, my topic of presentation is tuberculosis of calcaneum in children, a series of 11 cases. Calcaneum is predominantly cancerous, weight-bearing bone. Any disease affecting it, so there is propensity to collapse. Tuberculosis of cal calcaneum is a rare condition with non-specific presentation that mimics other diseases. There is lack of awareness among the treating physician, <coughs> so there is delayed diagnosis. Consequence if left untreated, first it is a purely osseous lesion, later in a <coughs> joint development and in later stages subtalar arthritis and arthrodesis. My study is retrospective study, purpose of the study is to review the presentation, healing response and functional result in children. The study materials are clinical records, investigations and serial radiograph of 10 children in 11 feet. Age of age range is 7 to 12 years. Duration of symptoms are 1 month to 1.5 year. Average follow up post completion of treatment is 17 months. Diagnosis made by histopathological microbiological examination. Multiple specimens were set taken so that diagnosis can't be missed. It's made positive for AFP in one cases. Histopathology was positive in 8 cases and cl by clinical radiological finding diagnosis are made in 2 cases. Tender and warm swelling in <coughs> all the cases without discharging sinus in 3 cases with discharging sinus 7 <coughs> cases and heal up sinus present in all cases and multifactor uh, multifocal tuberculosis in one, one patient. Heal up sinus to walking and refusal to walk on the affected heel. I will give importance to this sign because in endemic countries of tuberculosis, if it is present, we should look for the tuberculosis calcaneum and further investigate. Plain X-ray findings are single lytic lesion in 7 cases, in 4 cases multiple lytic lesion and sequestra evident on X-ray in all the cases except 3. Here we can see the large lytic lesion. Here we can see the multiple lytic lesion with the sequestras. Parameter for functional evaluation and healing in children, clinical parameters are pain during walking, healing of, healing of sinuses, passive sub subtalar range of movement in foot dorsiflexion, 
radiological parameters are evidence of remineralization, obliteration of cavities, and septalar configuration, which is measured by crucial angle of Gissan. Crucial angle of Gissan is angle formed by two strong cortical studs seen on the lateral radiograph. One runs along the lateral margin of posterior facet, uh, other runs up to the anterior process of the calcaneum. At follow up, no pain on the level walking in all the patient. Average healing time of the sinus is 10 weeks. Normal subtalar range of movement in all except two. We have not faced any recurrences <coughs> in available follow up. Resolution of larger, uh, larger cavities took longer time. We can see the large. Uh, lytic lesion which has not resolved post treatment after 3 years also. Here we can see diffuse involvement of the bilateral calcaneum that heals completely without deformation of calcaneum and septal joint configuration post treatment. Cases with the initial septal joint involvement can either develop septal joint arthritis or arthrosis. We can see in the x-rays. Crucial angle of Gissan deteriorate in one case who continued weight bearing during the initial phase of treatment. So I will give importance to non-weight bearing in initial phase of treatment for 6 weeks. So take home message here, heal up sign, an important diagnostic pointer, do investigate for tuberculosis and endemic region. Sequestra resolves with the chemotherapy alone without the need of keratage in most of the cases. The large lytic lesion in the bone may persist for several years without serious consequences. Gisan angle can be used to assess the septal joint development. This is the we are giving the extended view of it in other than trauma. Thank you. Thank you, Doctor. Uh, this heal up sign uh, is written in textbooks or you have given this nomenclature? So these are uh, they have written in textbooks. Uh, well, uh, I have one thing to say that uh, you can send this article for presentation in Indian Foot and Ankle Journal. Okay, sir. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Posterior technique for the management of the club foot, Dr. Sangwan. <coughs> Good morning, sir. Dr. Jha and my dear colleague. My topic is Ponsity method. So, quantity technique for the management of color food deformity. Actually, my previous speaker. I already told so many things, so I am not going to repeat the same, except that uh, for remembering, you can remember that uh, cave, cave was adduction, virus and equine deformity, especially for the postgraduate student, otherwise this is. Then etiology, hereditary <coughs> factor, other factors they are there, spina bifida may be there, but the adject etiology is not known, and so that why there are so many theories are there. So Pirani score and the other score, they, nowadays they are quite popular. But uh, as far as we are concerned, even in spite of all these scores, it is very, very difficult to manage the cases, especially when they are of severe deformity. So these are the whether you uh, post crease one or multiple or rigidic violence, similarly on the medial side, similarly on the lateral side, similarly, especially colostes are there. So there are two methods, conservative and surgical, and both have got their own value. So nowadays, the Ponsity method is quite accepted. Previously, the kite method was there. So complication of surgery are especially neurovascular surgery, neuro injury, plus skin inj the other is severe scarring and stiffness of the joint is almost ruled until unless we are careful in handling the at the time. Correction rate is quite high and by the OPD basis it can be done and the less requirement even if they are not corrected fully, the you can say cutting and releasing or lengthening will be less as compared to when we don't do anything. Foot obtained is usually painless and supple and the treatment period is short if it is done properly. So nowadays even this uh, Ponsity method has been modified that is called accelerated Ponsity method. So instead of a weekly cost, we can have fifth day or sometimes even twice a week. 
or it, this has shown good results. But I may tell you it is very, very difficult because I have seen most every time these patients, they belong to poor socioeconomic status. And it is very difficult for them to either stay in the hospital or in the city or coming twice. So can shorten the time, modify Ponsti method, percutaneous tenotomy done before even casting. And actually I believe that if you feel that the tendo is very tight, so that it should be done early rather than just waiting that all the deformities they are corrected. So manipulation of the cast five to seven days, four times. And actually manipulation is equally important that we should keep our this thumb on the head of the talus, which is lying subcutaneous or which is very, very prominent. And then we can help that uh, this is corrected properly. Then always above knee cast, always above knee cast. Usually we have got tendency that uh, you apply below knee and then this cast usually becomes uh, down and the foot goes inside and it is not possible to see even the circulation. Then the lifting of the first bare tarsal. When it is done, so patient attendant, they are not satisfied. Sometimes they believe that, uh, that they, this is not being properly applied or it has gone even worse. So subsequent uh, cast you just see, they will be correcting the, especially the adduction as well as the virus. And uh, after manipulation, actually in between when we have removed the cast, so always, even otherwise also we always apply this uh, uh, calamine lotion and I always ask that uh, Although it is said that the doctor they should go on doing, I am quite sure that at least in my setup, even in spite of best efforts, doctors they don't go manipulating. Usually we tell the attendant what they are doing. And so in my opinion, either the attendants they must be told what they are supposed to do in between the, you can say, removal of the cost. So then the tenotomy, Achilles, usually three weeks. Correction of rigid equinus due to tight tendon Achilles. And usually we should be able to do it. And then, so this knife may, should not be used because otherwise chances of, uh, you can say, cutting the other structure are there. So usually, keratome is the best one which we should use. And you just, although we have done quite, uh, you can say, satisfactorily, but I believe that uh, this is not the microscopic incision. I don't believe that uh, every time no, we will succeed. I have seen so many times we are befooling ourselves as well as the, you can say, postgraduate who are sitting by my side and then they will say it is okay, okay. So many times it is not okay at all, I may tell you. I have found that uh, whenever I am not sure, although in one or two cases I now admit that I have done the wrong thing, but now I say that if I am not able to do like this, then I always give transverse incision. I always give it transverse incision though, so that I am 100% sure that I have to I did it. Otherwise, usually we teach that uh, you go like this, you t just uh, you can say only posteriorly and it will cut. But uh, I don't believe that uh, although if you are too efficient, you may be able to do. But if we are not, then at least we should do proper operation. So then you, ch you just see these creases are there and uh, once you do tenotomy and these creases, they will disappear. And the other thing is that uh, there is always a certain giving way. There is a, if you keep it dorsiflex, there is always uh, you can the feeling of giving way that uh, you have cut it. And then there is a click sound is also there. So whenever there is a excess bleeding is there, we always try to press for five minutes. There is no harm that uh, you, you just leave and then you try to show that uh, nothing is happening. No, we after all patients they are coming with faith on us. So that is the, we should not uh, erode their faith. So. It's, I always try to keep it uh, pressed with my own hand so that the bleeding stops. Even when we operate, uh, I may tell you, usually there is a one or two way they are lying on the tendo Achilles. When you operate, you will see yourself. So that how you are sure that uh, whether you have not cut those veins, so that uh, I always try to keep it pressed. Then later on, you can see that uh, this is Dennis Brown and only thing that uh, there should be a gap here so that uh, you can see that whether the foot is touching the, you can say the brace or not. Otherwise, if it is not, then sometimes because the, they are quite big and what will happen? Then the foot will be loose and it will not be effective at all. So uh, kindly try to see that uh, it is always visible and almost three, 23 hours. So what are the observations? So we op manage uh, 60 feet and in Almost uh, in most of the time, uh, time is over, sir. So if you want, uh, I can continue. That uh, calamine lotion is there, calamine lotion. Then the, 
then similarly like this uh, it has been corrected then uh, new patient again corrected and another case complication you just see if we don't apply this calamine lotion you will see that uh, allergy reaction is there always apply calamine lotion then similarly if you put too much pressure over here then there will be you can get pressure sore or even ulceration and uh, similarly on the proximal side probably may tell you at the thigh when if you don't avert the cotton what will happen here also impingement will take place and sore will form so these are the complication which can occur and then in between actually we should ask the attendant as well as the doctor they should pull the heel pull the heel never try to do dorsiflexion here always pull the heel always try to pull the heel as well as press it here for doing dorsiflexion rather than here so averting the cotton unnecessary pressure or the cost and take on vessel early trinotium for rigid and severely deformed color foot don't wait that uh, i will correct uh, and then i will do no i believe that uh, trinotomy is a quite effective and it should be done at the earliest poncity i proved to be a very effective management and correction of equines by pulling of the heel and dorsi like you know hind foot not fore foot extra cotton over the bony prominence some patient still require surgery a alta cartilage approach should always be there never try to do that uh, only poncity poncity so we should not be blind follower of uh, anyone we should try to use our own brain also thank you thank you dr sagwan yes well it has been a very matter of fact presentation and i fully agree with professor sagwan that tendo achilles usually is to be tenotomized after five six serial casts have been done but i am also of the view that the tendo achilles after being stressed in serial plaster cast you are not able to palpate it correctly in later stages so what i routinely will do is i will do it either during the second or maximum third plaster dr sagman has rightly said that he will do it maybe even before the first plaster i think this is the right approach then the transfer in season to a minute now we give say like this i will turn like this and i am not able to do at least i admit at least in two three patients i was not able to do and still because the resident was seeing me i said oh okay okay but later on i was quite guilty that uh, i was not able to do the job properly so, so, so actually is achieved or not we should go for tenotomy no actually if the i may tell you if you feel that that tendo is very very tight very tight so why to wait unnecessarily and the other is that i may tell you that uh, if you what is the harm of doing early i am not able to follow this uh, what is the harm of doing it? one is that uh, although equine should not be corrected otherwise rocker bottom will take place rocker bottom will take place but i am always saying that you press the hind foot you press the hind foot and pull the heel that is why chances of rocker bottom will be minimal thank you very much thank you sir we have 15 minutes left the left over dr shah velulla is is he here dr taneja is he here so let us conclude this session sir thank you sir let us conclude this session then thank you sir thank you to everybody thank you chairman uh, well the time allotted to this paper is 20 minutes <coughs> but maybe uh, i will restrict myself to that well friends first of all i have brought greetings from patna and from my hospital mahavir batsalya hospital well the topic is dilemma in deformity correction and it is especially in reference to situations where you are operating in polio corrective camps now you can see a host of deformed foot so called club foot but mind you if you attentively look into the deformities they are not all congenital deformities some of them are acquired and most likely because of polio now i was talking of camp so this is one of the scene where a camp has been organized and 
I have been active on all India scene. I have also visited Nepal and <coughs> this Sadhuji known as Swami Dayanandji has been helping us in all the camps because you need finances and he has been offering his finances. So it's a teamwork in which two other orthopedic surgeons are also there. Now these are patients who are waiting for surgery, waiting hall, another examination hall, patients, again the same patients with all the deformed limbs. There are atypical patient presentation, though you have called it a polio camp, but when patients are there you find that there are many other deformed patients uh, also. This is the x-ray of the previous patient. This is one patient in which the proximal femur has not developed. This is a young lady with such a deformed foot. This is a very typical position in which the patient refused amputation and is wearing a modified orthosis. Well, nutritional deficiencies producing so much of genu vulgum do also keep on coming into the camps. This is simply congenital absence of toes, no deformity as such, and such deformities because of Blount's disease is also very common. Upper limb deformities, though not very common, but can be seen. Now, when I was talking of very dilemmas, I was trying to look into the census also. Six million people in India, as per the 2001 census, they are physically challenged, orthopedically challenged, out of which, uh, out of 21 million people physically challenged one way or the other way. Now, Hopefully, we are going to be declared polio-free very shortly, but lot of effort will be required to achieve success. So, physical correction of deformities, uh, residual deformities have to be physical, of the physically challenged patients will require corrective surgery. Now, These are some of the places where I have been operating. Now the external stabilization system, I personally feel and papers have been presented here also this morning and yesterday also and people are almost in agreement that for neglected club foot deformities, you can universally correct them with a external stabilization system. Now, when I was correcting these deformities, what happened was a very unique situation. Now, before that, talking about the unique situation, let me talk about uh, acquired equinovarus deformity. So, equinovarus deformity, what we need is that if the deformities are flexible, they are more easily correctable than late fixed deformities. Tendon surgery, if they are to be performed, perform them early because they prevent progression of the deformities. And you must have a belief that early surgery should be done. The goal is that rebalance the foot, which will reduce pain and will maintain a plantigrade and suable foot. Now, the dilemma lies here. What we have been doing till now? Deformities in an adult patient, our choice used to be triple orthodesis. So, should we perform a triple orthodesis or we should not perform a triple orthodesis is the question. Now, the attention has shifted to joint sparing procedures. 
soft tissue procedures, osteotomies, fusions and usually they are combined. So what we say is an algorithmic approach. Dorsiflexion osteotomy of the first metatarsal is to be performed, transfer of peroneus longus to peroneus brevis, plantar fossa release, transfer of EHL to neck of first metatarsal, transfer of tibialis anterior to lateral cuneiform. So triple arthrodesis is avoided. Now when we performed triple arthrodesis, ankle or midfoot arthritis used to be seen. Subsequent ankle arthrodesis was avoided, telonavicular pseudoarthrosis but asymptomatic. There used to be doubtful radiographic fusion. So most important is achieve plantigrade foot, largest and longest review was, uh, was performed by, uh, in 1990 by Salzman in which it said that 67 foot in 57 patients on 44 years follow-up, 78% residual deformity. All had X-ray arthritis at ankle or midfoot. Now, all of us agree that JESS is a very good method of correcting club foot. And I had a patient coming to that unique case in which the medial malleolar epiphysis was absent the foot had a deformity of equino varus and I and the uh, patient also had shortening. So I thought of control distraction and to my utter surprise on control distraction the medial malleolar epiphysis which was not there was deficient reappeared and mind you this was a case in which during the neonatal stage the child had osteomyelitis of the distal tibia. Now this is the scanogram which very evidently shows that there is shortening of the limb with absence of the medial malleolus. Now following traction, this is pre, following traction there is limb lengthening and now you can see that the medial malleolar epiphysis has reappeared. Here also you will see in the lateral view that the whole tibial platform has reappeared. So if we can go back, this is the pre in which the tibia was shorter, the medial aspect of the distal tibial epiphysis was not there, the fibula was also not looking very healthy, was little deformed and see what has happened in this post post-traction, distraction radiograph, it has appeared. Now I looked into the literature, this is another view of reformation, looked into the literature and found that there was one case reported by Liu Tang which had osteomyelitis of the proximal tibia, not distal tibia and there was regeneration. Similarly, there were three cases reported by Song and Kim in which the proximal tibial epiphysis had, was not there and it reformed. So I can conclude very safely out of this dilemma that appearance with spontaneous reossification of medial malleolar epiphysis with restoration of distal tibial plafond and preservation of giant congruity is unique result of control distraction. The potential for regeneration of epiphysis following infantile osteomyelitis of the distal tibia suggests that such cases should be treated expectantly with regard to joint congruity. Friends, I would like to stop it here, otherwise I would have preferred to talk about also various dilemmas in calcaneous deformity. That if you keep on doing something, sometimes you get a good result and this is a very unique case where I have shown that medial malleolar epiphysis has reappeared. Only yesterday, uh, no, during the workshop there was a paper in which the Perthes hip, they were 
um, lengthening the limb by 2 mm and then again they were shortening the limb and they showed that there was good regeneration in the Parthi's hip. Then there was uh, a paper presented regarding absence of capital femoral epiphysis following osteomyelitis and I had suggested there that you go for distraction maybe the absent or maybe non-visible rudiment capital femoral epiphysis can reappear. So the whole essence of today's presentation is that any epiphysis following infection which seems to be absent you give distraction and maybe it reappears. Thank you. Thank you Dr. Jha. Now the floor is open for a discussion. Any questions please? No, there is no question. Now the next speaker is Dr. R. K. Agarwal. There is no other speaker available to my knowledge. Sir, Dr. R. A. Agarwal. Yeah. Is it? Yes, it is. Mr. Chairman, my topic is the mic is coming. Mic is not coming. Yeah. Mr. Chairman, my topic is the managing neglected clubfoot with Elizarov. A review of 1009 cases. Actually, when you correct the deformities of the club foot, once you would have the clear cut deformity pattern, if you go to the deformities, there are three types of deformities frontal plane, the side to side, sagittal plane, and you see the from the top that is the horizontal plane. If you see the frontal plane, there is a pronation of forward foot in comparison to the hind foot. If you see in the horizontal plane, there is a adduction of the forefoot. If one see from the frontal plane from the back, there is a varus heel. And if you see from the side, there is a equinus and chaos deformity. So, for the manager of club put, we recommended three systems, 0 to 2 years by Ponsetti corrected cast, 2 to 5 years by minimum invasive cast correction MICC, and more than 5 years Elizra based on the Ponsetti principles. For the children, I am talking about the neglected cases for the child, child neglected case for 2 to 5 years, we recommended a new technique called MICC, Minimally Invasive Cost Correction. What is the step of that? First step is the plantar fasciotomy, serial plaster cast at percutaneous tendocle stenotomy. Boy, 2 years and 7 months, plasters were tried, but it failed. We take in our hospital four photographs from, from the top. You can see this photograph had been taken from the top. This is from the side. This is from the plantar surface and from the back. So we have, this is the virus deformity. This is the adduction deformity. This is the amount of pronation and this is the amount of equinus. So you should know how much is the we grading that, how much is the equinus, how much is the pronation of the forefoot, how much is the adduction, and how much is the varus. Basically, we have studies in Cadver also 
the two factors two ligaments or two soft tissues are responsible for the deformities basically one is the plantar ligament this plantar ligament it is contracted and when it is contracted it causes pronation of the fore foot in comparison to the hind foot and mid foot so what happens talo navicular joint is a ball and socket joint so the hind foot and mid foot is supinated and fore foot is pronated like this so it will not abduct until and unless you will bring fore foot into the supination so ball and socket will not move the first step is the what the ponseti told you should bring the fore foot into the supination i think not much time constraint no, no, okay no, so what happened so our main aim is whether whether you are doing the plaster correction or whether doing the uh, this uh, child is mature our main aim is to bring this thing this is the ball head of the talus and this is the navicular so what happens this hind foot and mid foot is supinated and fore foot is pronated by plantar ligament it is contracted so what happens this is pronated and this is supinated so you cannot do the abduction till you don't get the the collinear it means you have to bring throughout treatment supination of the fore foot what happens when this is supinated so navicular when you abduct that navicular give thrust to the cuboid bone and cuboid bone give thrust to the calcaneus this is a saddle tip joint so when you abduct it the calcaneus is varus and internal rotation actually i have done the study the structure literature very few people nobody has written there is a internal rotation of the calcaneus nobody has written that we have done horizontal ct scan then we have found out what is the deformity